Come on, Winston, they gotta see you at least once. Oh, here he is. Here's Winston. Look at that face. You kidding me? This is the outro. I'm probably gonna show it first. Yeah, I'm gonna show it first. Good night. Daisy, you see your little buddy? You see your baby? So these are my Cavaliers. My name is Ryan. Today's video is how to travel with them. Great. Like I said, welcome back everybody. My name is Ryan McNeil and I am hosted by Trickstars, Three Star Studios. That's the sponsor of today's video. That would be trickstars.com. It's where you can get all these awesome t-shirts. I paint them myself, I put them on t-shirts and I sell them to you guys and to others, friends, family. And so it really helps me, helps the channel. If you wanna show some support, show some love, go to trickstars.com and get some of your cool t-shirts made by yours truly. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get into today's video. So my first point that I wanna give you is uh, when I travel with my dogs, I try my very best to take them with me. I know it might seem difficult to take your dogs with you everywhere you go, but honestly, I can't recommend it enough. It's super important that they're with you because with a Cavalier Spaniel especially, they're very separation anxiety oriented, so if you leave, they get sad. And so the best option for you is to take them with you everywhere you go. Typically, when I'm driving up to 12 hours in a day, I can take them with me in the car much easier than anything else. I will, uh, <laughs> hi there, hi. Uh, if I'm taking them up to 12 hours, then I'll just use like the seat belt leash buckle and uh, I'll just strap them in in the seat beside me. Sometimes they, they get away and they get in my lap and they wanna sleep and ride in my lap. So sometimes we let them do that, but for the most part, I keep them buckled in with their harnesses on. So taking them with you in the car is pretty easy to do and if you're gonna go somewhere, you know, four hours away, five hours away, it's really not a big deal. Just bring them with you, bring their food, bring their toys, everything you're gonna need for them and just bring them with you. They're gonna really appreciate the time they get to spend with you. If you're gonna be flying with uh, your dogs, it's a little more difficult but there's a few ways that you can do it. One is to register them as a, an emotional support dog or a service dog. Service dog is the most difficult they have to perform a task that you yourself cannot perform. So obviously like the blind uh, leading dogs, they perform a task that their owners cannot. Or if you're deaf, um, certain there's other certain conditions that qualify you for a service animal dog, but most people go with emotional support. So if you have, I don't know, anxiety or depression or I don't know, some sort of psychological condition that allows you to justify having a dog with you to either calm you down or keep you happy, then you can do that as well. And it's really easy to sign up online. They get your certificate. Uh, I believe you have to you know, have a doctor's note and then you sign up online with your doctor's note and it's pretty straightforward. And you get your emotional support dog registration. The third way to take the dog on the airplane with you is to just treat it like a carry-on. If you uh, pay a little bit extra on your plane ticket and you can put them in a small carrier, like if they are a small dog, then they can go under the seat in front of you. So with these dogs, that's the best thing for me. Like myself or my dad or whoever's traveling with me, we can each bring one of the dogs. We can pay like $100 extra on their plane ticket. I don't know, it may be different from different carriers, but it's a little bit extra. And you just bring the dog in a handheld carrier through the airport. And when you're on the airplane, you gotta leave them in the carrier under the seat. And um, you know, that's, that's the only rule for that, but it's not that big of a deal. And then the last way you can bring a dog on the airplane with you is like ship them like cargo. So if you're going on a long trip or like military deployments and stuff, they'll put the animal in a crate underneath the, like in the cargo bay, and then they'll take care of your dog as you fly for long distances, long periods of time. But um, that would be unrecommended because I'm sure it's noisy and cold. So I'd rather just keep them with me. But if you do have big dogs and you do want to fly, then you will have to uh, ship them basically like cargo. So anyways, that's a way for you to do it. It's not impossible. It can be done. So that pretty much wraps up taking the dog with you. I cannot recommend that enough. You should bring the dog with you if you can, if it's possible. But if you can't do that, then there's other things that you can do when you need to travel and you do have dogs. Winston, come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah. So the second point that I have for you to travel when you have dogs is to leave them with a friend or a family member. This is, you know, number two in the recommendations because 
if you want to leave them, uh, if you have to leave them, it's best to leave them with someone like a friend or a family member that will love them as much as you do or at least get kind of close. I try to leave mine with my mom or my dad or even a friend if I have to. But you want to make sure that you plan ahead and that you ask permission, obviously. So I'll make sure that I talk with my mom or my friend or whoever's going to be taking care of them for me. You know, make sure they know ahead of time when you're going to be traveling and what you need them to do. And you're going to need to provide their toys and their food and a crate even uh, as well. So make sure you just plan ahead and provide everything that the dogs need to the person who's going to be taking care of them for you. Come here, baby. I wouldn't recommend leaving your pet with a friend or family member for over a week because you don't want to overstay your welcome or their welcome. You don't want people to just kind of become a nuisance that they're watching your dog for you. So anything over a week, you might want to try one of the other options. So your third option when you want to travel but you have dogs and you're not sure what to do is that you could board them with your vet. Now I would really recommend that you find a reputable veterinarian or a facility that can take care of your dogs for you. You want to make sure that they have areas to run and play and socialize with other dogs. So you just don't want to leave them with a facility that's going to keep them in a cage every day of the week and you know maybe walk them but really not socialize them with much and they don't get played with, they don't have you know activities and stuff like that. Look for a happy place. Look for a veterinarian or a boarding facility that provides like excellent care for your dogs because you pay a lot for them, you love them a lot. You want to leave them with someone who's gonna make sure that they're played with, they're cared for, they're fed and watered and go to the bathroom, everything like that because it's already a stressful experience for them to be in cages or in kennels and left alone. Basically, apart from you, it's stressful for them. So you wanna make sure you find the best possible care. There's no need to be cheap. You wanna make sure that you pay enough to uh, have your dogs well taken care of for. Don't go with the budget option. They're your little friendly family members, furry family members. So make sure that uh, you take care of them well. And again, when you're gonna leave your little dogs with the uh, veterinarian to board them, you need to provide them with their food and their toys, their blankets, their beds. You want to make sure that the vet has everything that they need or the boarder has everything that they need for your dogs to be happy and comfortable. I like to include things like a blanket or a dog bed or maybe one of my shirts or hoodies. That way they have something to sleep on that smells like me so they're a little more comfortable. I would recommend boarding your dogs if you're going to be gone for a week or more. I think that that's the best option because they do have a lot of care that they will need over a long period of time and you don't want to burden a friend or family member with that and you know if you're taking them with you for a week at a time that can be stressful too so if you decide to board them because it's easier then um, you want to make sure they're taken care of so just use that for when you're going to be gone for a week or more. So the fourth point that I have for you if you're going to be traveling and you have dogs is that you can leave them in their crate at home or you can leave them out in the open at home. And this is for if you're going to be gone for up to eight hours. I really would just suggest don't do this if you're going to be gone for more than eight hours. This is an example for like if you have to go to work or if you have to go to school then you need to leave them alone for a little while and you might not can't take them to work or to school with you. So if you're running errands, running groceries, uh, you know, doing things you have to do around town, you can leave them. I choose to leave them out in the house when I'm gonna be gone for up to an hour. If I'm gonna be gone for more than an hour, I put them in their crate just to make sure that they don't get into anything that they shouldn't and that I know they're kept separate. I do have a male and a female, so I don't need any accidental babies coming out, so I make sure I put them in their crate if I'm gonna be gone for a while. Obviously, I don't leave them alone. If they're in that time of the year where they're gonna have puppies, I don't leave to let them do their business, but I have separate kennels, so when it is that time, I keep them in separate kennels. That way there's no confusion and no potential accidents. If you are going to leave your animal in a crate for you know, an extended period of time throughout the day, you want to make sure that they're fed and that they've gone to the bathroom beforehand. That way there's no accidents in the crate and they're not sitting in there starving or thirsty. You want to make sure they're well taken care of before you decide to leave for a while. Winston, you're sleeping hard, huh? I have Tiny sleeping on my desk right here. and. You can't see him, but he's just sprawled out. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. And then Daisy's right here. They love to ride behind me, like in the car or when I'm sitting here working, they'll sit behind me and just, just like this. So I'm sure you guys are loving this right now. Like you need to get a Cavalier. Just watch my other videos and then get one and then come back and watch more. And we'll have a great time. <laughs> 
A final tip for if you're gonna leave your dog in the crate at home, you could get a camera for your house and that way when you're gone, you can check on the camera, see how the dogs are doing. Uh, this is something that I do, but I use it actually for my reptiles because they do have lights and all kinds of automated care systems that I have put in place. So I use the camera when I'm out of town to check on their systems, make sure everything's working correctly. And if it's not, I have a neighbor or a friend or family member come by and fix the things that have gone wrong. Usually it's just like a light bulb that goes out, um, but I have rain machines and automatic timers and that sort of thing. So if something goes wrong, uh, I want to be able to see it. So you could do that with your dogs as well. You could get a small camera that connects to your phone. You could leave in near their kennel, near their cages, and then you could watch them or just out in the house if they're running around. I know my camera's like motion sensor, so it sees when things move around the house. It pretty much follows the dog around. So that's pretty cool. It's optional, but I can recommend it. All right guys, that concludes the video. Uh, today, I just wanna make sure that I really can't stress enough that if you're gonna have dogs, you're gonna travel with them, you're gonna leave them alone. Uh, I personally would say you need two. You need to have two dogs because them spending time alone, it sucks. So having a buddy to share that with is fantastic. And uh, you heading out? You got somewhere to be? So uh, I can't recommend enough having two dogs. I just think that it's great because there's gonna be times where you have to work, you have to leave, and that way they have a friend, a family member near them to play with. And so I think that you should have two dogs no matter what. Also, I strongly recommend that you bring the dogs with you. I can't stress that enough. If it's at all possible, you should bring them with you because they make great companions and the more you socialize them and the more you travel with them, the better off they're gonna be when they're in the car, in the plane, you know, out in the park. You wanna have your dogs really socialized. I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to just make it quick and explain to you that it is possible to travel responsibly with your dogs or without. There are things you can do, there are options that you have to make sure that your animals are cared for and that you still have the freedom that you feel you need to take care of your business or fun or vacation, whatever it is that you're traveling for. I wanna make sure that you know you can do the things that you need to do without being too hindered by having animals at home that you need to take care of but you still have responsibilities. Come on, Winston, they gotta see you at least once. Oh, here he is. Here's Winston. Daisy, you see your little buddy? You see your baby? So these are my Cavaliers. My name is Ryan. Today's video is how to travel with them. Great. Look at that face. You kidding me? This is the outro. I'm probably gonna show it first. Yeah, I'm gonna show it first. Good night. So guys, thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate you. We're almost at 500 subscribers. That's insane. Like, this summer is gonna be awesome. I've got so much planned. We're gonna do so much fun stuff. We're gonna be out on the water. We're gonna be up in the mountains. We're gonna be going all kinds of places. And these little guys are coming with me. So I really hope that you subscribe and then comment down below what you wanna see, what you'd like to see, any video ideas. Um, please go visit my website, trickstars.com. The links are in the description. And you can get my shirts my artwork, my prints, and uh, maybe one day I'll release some dog content too, yeah? Maybe we'll draw one of the woofs and put it on a shirt. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Winston, Daisy, and I will see you in the next video.